Hello everybody, welcome to Sin City Living. My name is Jason, I'll be bringing you today's episode. As always, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. And once again, we'd like to give our shout out to our patrons. We appreciate all tips and support. It's only gonna to go towards making the channel better and adding more games. Hopefully roulette coming up next. If you're curious about it, just go ahead and check the description of the video. And otherwise, let's get to it. So what are we gonna go over today? Today I wanna to go over some of the common mistakes I see players making. Uh, that costs them money when they are playing dice. Now, I'm not going to go over ones that are more philosophical, such as not pressing and things along those lines, uh, because that's just a matter of, of taste, a matter of personal choice. Um, instead, just want to go over some of what I see that when we see these things as dealers, we see players do this. Oftentimes, we'll try and advise the players, but some players are very, very anti-dealer. They, they assume that the dealer is there for on, to steal all their money. They, they don't seem to understand that we make our money when the players win. We don't, what the casino pays us is maybe a third of our actual income, if that. We make most of our income off of the players. So we want the players to win, or at the very least, we don't want the players to just give up money, just give free money to the casino. Because after all, what the casino makes is in our money. So we do try and advise players, but some players are very, very um, aggressive, I suppose, best word to use towards the dealers, which then, of course, makes the dealers shut down. The, the dealers aren't, aren't interested in, in getting barked at, getting yelled at, getting cussed at. Um, so we'll, we'll back off. But then some players are, are very, very receptive to it, especially when we ask them, you know, why do you play this way? Hey, do you know about this? Um, and I've seen that there's a lot of things that the players just don't know. There's a lot of things that we'll tell a player about. And they're like, really? I didn't know that. So... I want to cover some of those things because it costs the players money. It costs the players money fairly often. So one of the more common ones that I see is fairly basic. It's improper place bets. Now we've covered, we've discussed, briefly discussed these in other, other videos, but uh, let me use a, a great example. First we have the, let's say the point is, let's say the point is 10. So first we have the, let me just get 25 across. And the dealer will say, hey, drop me two bucks, we'll fix a six and eight, and we just get waved off. I'm like, okay, not a problem, not a problem at all. It's, it's up to the player how they want to play. However, here's the thing. What does $5 pay on the six? Now, this is assuming you're on a $5 minimum bet table, because this obviously would not work on a, uh, on a $10 or $15 minimum table. But what does a $5 place bet on the six pay? It pays $5.84, which means that every time this wins, you are getting paid $5, and the casino is getting paid $0.84 cents off of your bet. Now, I've actually mentioned this, the, this in the past to two players and it's only happened a couple times but once or twice I've actually had someone just laugh and roll their eyes and go 84 cents like um, you know acting like 84 cents is just some kind of, of joke and and I get it it's really not a whole lot of money um, although if a player is playing on a five dollar minimum bet table and doing the absolute bare minimum bet you would think that 84 cents might actually be something they would want to keep a hold of but it's not so much 84 cents that matters it's the amount that you play. How often do six and eights hit? Well, 10 out of 36 rolls of the dice. So we're probably looking at, uh, I would say in an, in an average hour, or if someone plays for the entire hour and does this particular bet every single time, I would say we're probably looking at 15 to 20 hits on the six and eight, at the very minimum 10. Bare, bare minimum 10 hits on a six or eight where they get paid $5 in an hour, bare minimum. I would say it's much, much closer to 20. But we'll look at 10. So what is 10? 10 is $8.40. $8.40 that they gave up in one hour. One hour of play. Play for five hours, you're looking at a minimum of $40. You're probably looking at closer to $80 to $100 that you gave to the casino, which for a lot of players that are playing at this level is their is probably greater than their buy-in. A lot of players that are playing this level bought in for $20, $40, $60, or something along those lines. So this is one of the first spots that I see that costs the player money. Um, and they're giving that money to the casino, which is kind of a, a weird thing. And it, it certainly scales up. Here's another very, very common one. 25 bucks. 25 bucks. What does this pay? This pays $29.84. 29, oh, I'm sorry, not 29.84. It pays uh, 29.16. Pays $29.16. 16 cents is nothing. I'll admit that it's it's really not a whole lot, except when you go back into the uh, 
uh, over the course of an hour. Now we're looking at a dollar sixty to three twenty, and now we go in the course of five hours of play, and we're looking. Now we're starting to look at at uh, at in a whole nother bet. We see a whole separate bet, whole nother bet, all because the player didn't want to either go one dollar less, make it twenty four, which pays one dollar less, but they're not giving any change to the casino, or to go five dollars higher. Either one. You want to be proper, guys. When you're improper on your place bets, you're giving up money. It's a small amount of money, but trust me, this adds up very, very, very fast. Um, I would love for some uh, casino to do a uh, um, to run their cameras through and do some kind of of check on the like, calculation on how much the casino makes just based off of improper bets. It's got to be quite a bit. Uh, another one that is not on this layout, um, and it isn't on every layout, I wouldn't even say it's on most layouts, but it's on a decent number of dice layouts. There's a bet, typically right here, that's split into two, and it's called the Big Six, Big Eight. We have a lot of players ask about it. What's the Big Six, Big Eight? And the dealer will, will invariably tell them it's a bad bet. That's our answer. What's the Big Six? That's a bad bet. You know, what's the Big Eight? It's a bad bet. Um, and the reason for that is because it pays even money. So now if you're just going to bet the five, if you're just going to bet an improper eight, then you might as well just do a big eight. But I've seen people do 10, 15, 25, $30 on a big eight or a big six. Well, what does it pay? Well, let's see, you put $30 on a big eight and in eight rolls, you made $30. The big six, big eight pays even money. Why would you not place it and make extra money? You can play $30 on a big eight and make 30 bucks, or you can play $30 on a place the eight and make $35. It just makes no sense not to do it. A common joke with the big six and big eight is that it needs to have a dealer envy. Um, you know, if someone bets a, a uh, $30 big eight and it gets paid, they should get paid $30 and the dealer should get paid five. I mean, that's, it's just a joke. Nobody really uh, seriously believes that, but it's, it's just kind of indicative of how bad the bet is. It's, it's not a good idea to bet something that pays even money when there's a same, the same bet on the table and the same number that has the same win-loss conditions that doesn't pay you even money, pays you extra. Just makes more sense. Um, so another common one that I see is a player that has just recently learned to play the don'ts, and the don'ts are not a horrible bet any more than the pass line is a horrible bet. They basically have almost the same odds. Um, it is not. It is not. It is not playing with the house. That makes absolutely no sense. If there was a bet that was playing with the house, it wouldn't be on this table. Believe me, there is a house edge built into the don't pass. If it was playing with the, if it was, if it was playing with the house or betting with the house, then it would be a can't lose because the house has the edge always. So there's a house edge built into the don't pass. But one common thing I'll see is I'll see someone bet a don't pass. Maybe they just recently learned how to bet the don't pass. They saw somebody doing it. They asked them about it, especially on a cold table, and they started playing it. Um, or maybe the dice have turned cold. They got a little curious. They asked about it, and they started playing it. So they bet the don't pass, and then say an eight rolls, and they they think, well, you know, I I I don't want to play the eight, you know, the eight has an okay chance of, of coming. The odds are still better for the seven to come than the eight, but a lot of people will not bet the six, the six and eight on a don't, such as on a don't come. They'll no action it. So the player decides, ah, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I, the, eight, the eight has a really good chance of rolling. So what they decide to do is they place the point on the line for $10. But the, basically what they're trying to do is they're trying to even out their bet. They're trying to make it so they don't don't uh, um, don't win or lose. What amazes me about this is if an eight rolls right here, they make a buck. If the seven rolls, they make nothing, but they don't lose anything either. So, you know, it's kind of a wash. But if you just want to, if you just want to, to uh, even it up, just take your don't pass back. You're allowed to do that. Take your don't pass back. Now you can't put it back down once you do. But if you don't like the point that it's on, instead of placing it. Take it don't pass back. And if you do want to place it, if you decide that, because some players will do this and then go, well, you know, I really like the, the, um, the odds of the eight rolling, so I'm going to go ahead and bet. I'm going to go ahead and place it for 30 bucks. Well, why would you not just take your don't pass back? It, it just doesn't make sense. They'll say, oh, well, you know, I'm hedging it slightly. Well, if you want to hedge it slightly, 
then take your don't pass back and just do an $18 pass line bet. I mean, it's, it just makes no sense to, to do both the don't pass and, and the pass line bet. Just take your don't pass back. You're allowed to do that. It's okay. There's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Um, now, the final thing that I see fairly common within the, this side of the table, at least, it comes with the combats. We actually just had this pop up last night. She's a super, super, super friendly player. Um, really nice lady, really nice girl. Um, and I was hoping I'd have an opportunity to explain this to her, but unfortunately it didn't, didn't come up. But I overheard her telling one of, the, uh, one of the other players that she likes the combats because she thinks they have better odds than the place bets. And I don't know if you've seen our other videos about uh, place bets or combats versus place bets and where the odds start to, to actually favor the combats, but it comes up around the 10 times odds. So if you're not betting max odds and you're at a 10 or 20 times place, it doesn't make sense to do the combats. It does not benefit you. You actually will make less money than if you were to place the point. Um, and she always did $10 odds regardless of what the point is. So if it went to the nine, she'd do $10 odds. Now, if that hits, she makes 25 bucks. But here's the thing. If someone places it for $20, they make $28. They make extra money. Make three, three extra bucks. It's not a whole lot. And some people will say, well, you know, that's, that, that combat is a hedge against the seven rolling. That, that extra 10 bucks is a hedge against the seven rolling. Uh, if, if that's what you believe, then, then by all means, go for it. Um, you'd be really better off just, just betting a, uh, an any seven. Um, you know, you could do a three dollar three way seven and, and uh, then place it for 20 bucks and you know, your win, win loss would be the same, except that unlike a come bet, the place bet will stay there. Um, now, if you're gonna bet max odds, if you're on a three, four, five table, it does still make more sense to do a place bet. If you are on a 10 times or 20 times, then it does make more sense to do a combat. The odds are better, but you have to be betting max odds. Otherwise, it makes more sense to do a place bet. The odds are better. The payoff is better. And why is that? Because of this right here. This right here, this piece that travels in, this piece that travels in gets paid even money. Whereas if you do a $10 place bet, it does not get paid even money. It's getting paid extra as a place bet does. Just shy, basically odds with a, with a small house edge built in. As odds, this would pay 15. As a place bet, it pays 14. There's a small house edge built in there. So that's why you have to have enough odds to overcome the fact that you have an even money portion of your bet in order to make it be play off better than a place bet. It takes a lot of odds to do that. Now the last one I see where I see a lot of people losing money um, is within the center action and it comes into being uh, because they don't know what it is they're betting. Now we've talked about this in the past um, and we tell people, you know, hey, pick a side, pick a direction, pick a plan, pick what, you're, what you want to do. What's happened a lot with the center action uh, especially over the last five, six months, is I've seen a lot of people that have heard or seen bets in the center, thought they sounded cool, thought that it made them look like experts or made it look cool if they were betting in there all the time. And especially for some reason, people think they look cool if they late bet. As a dicer come, as a dicer going out and the shooter's grabbing the, the dice, they think they look like an expert if right then they throw in a chip real fast and shout out a bet with whatever, whatever nickname or slang it is. You know, $5 Ohio, you know, $10 C&E. Um, and in reality, they don't actually look cool. They're disrupting the game, and at a certain point, they end up being uh, being no betted. And the reason for that, by the way, that, that dealers will no bet a late bet is not because we're trying to punish the player, we're trying to teach the player, uh, because prior to that, we'll have given two or three warnings of get your bets earlier while the dice are in the middle. The reason that we will do the no bet is because once the dice have moved, the stick person is not allowed to take their eyes off the dice. By procedure, they should not set up any bets. Sometimes they will, yes, but for the most part, the dealer should not set up any bets. They should not take their eyes off those dice at all. Those dice are considered the most important thing on the table, even above any of the chips. It is the most valuable part of the table. So they do not ever take their eyes off the dice. So once the dice move, the dealer is no longer allowed to set up a bet inside inside the middle, inside the, the center action. 
which means that to the cameras it looks really really suspicious when people throw money in it's not set up anywhere and then coincidentally the roll of the dice happened to land on what they bet and we are paying them um, there have actually been dealers that have been arrested and players that have been arrested for colluding in exactly that manner after the dice went out they would throw in a chip and mumble and then after the dice landed the dealers would set the chip up on whatever landed and then pay the player um, so that is the reason it is a protection for the dealers protection for the dealers and a protection for the game that we do not like late bets because that puts us all at risk so we'll warn a player two or three times and we'll stop we'll pause with the dice in the middle and ask are there any more bets and we'll ask the late better specifically do you have any more bets they say no we move the dice they throw a bet in no bet sorry we warned we tried to teach you we're not going to risk our jobs and our livelihoods for this so what kind of mistakes do I see within here? The not knowing the bets. I see players this that will do say, let me get a ten dollar horn horn high twelve. Let me get a five dollar horn high yo. Let me get a C and E and let me get a ten dollar high low. I literally saw this last night. This exact thing. Literally saw this last night. And it was the player, I even asked the player, you know, hey, what numbers are you betting? Do you know what numbers you're betting with those? And he actually said no. He had no idea what he was betting. He just thought he sounded like some kind of dice master. Uh, and what he was doing was he was actually betting the same numbers with almost every single bet that he had on the table. Um, and in many ways, they paid the exact same. Um, when he had a $10, if he did a $10 horn high 12 and a $5 horn high yo, what he actually had was he had a $12 horn bet and then he had two extra dollars on the 12 and a dollar extra on the yo. That's all it was. Um, you could spread that around and put those dollars around uh, instead of setting them up directly on those horn bets. Uh, and uh, um, so he, he actually didn't know what he was betting. He didn't know which numbers had the most money on them. So he also did not know what they pay. And that is where it's really, really key. We always recommend to you guys that you know what your bets pay. And when you're doing this scatter shot, four different bets, all approaching the exact same numbers, all approaching them from different directions, it's very difficult for a player to have any clue what those pay. And it also makes it far more likely for the dealers to make a mistake. Yes, dealers make mistakes. I challenge any single person out there to tell me that they have never made mistakes at their job. Not once, because I guarantee it's happened. Every single person out there makes mistakes at their job. And especially when you have an extremely fast-paced job where you have to do mathematical calculations in fractions of a second. They're basic math, super, super easy math. But you have to do them in fractions of a second for 16 people while all 16 people are yelling at you and yelling numbers at you, which just breaks your chain of, uh, uh, chain of concentration. So if the dealers that do this stuff all day every day have difficulty handling the four or five different bets especially press this press that press this press that out of the payouts we have to calculate everything out and then subtract out what you're trying to press so on and so forth if we have trouble doing it then the player definitely has trouble doing it and i recommend that players always know exactly what they bet what their bets pay out so that they can question the payout if it's wrong dealers make mistakes dealers expect and encourage players to say hey is that right i thought it paid this much if you say, is that right, well, what do you think it pays, sir? Because we're pretty sure that's right, and the player has absolutely no idea. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, we think it pays that much. Um, but if, and, you know, of course, the supervisor will double check. And as long as two or three of us get the same answer, we're, I can pretty much guarantee we're right. Um, but when a player says, you know, I don't think that's right, I think I get paid this much, that will make us stop and think. If the player says, oh, I don't think that's right, and they have the scattershot bet and they have no idea what it pays, the dealer is going to go, no, sir, I, I guarantee you it's right. Um, so it's, it's very, very important to know what, what it pays. Every day, every shift, uh, dealers make mistakes. It's going to happen. We encourage you guys to ask, you know, hey, is that right? You know, I thought it paid this much. Um, which is why we expect you guys to, if you're going to bet the scattershot, definitely know what it pays. It only benefits you. You lose money. That is something I see all the time when I'm out as a player. As a player, I'm not going to correct dealers. Uh, I'm not going to, and I'm not going to correct players or, or uh, um, correct dealers and, and correct the box. So when I'm out playing, I see it all the time. I see players get mispaid all the time because the player has no idea what their bet pays 
they just pick it up. They pick it up and they've lost money. And it's very prevalent out on the strip where they don't have boxmen anymore. Well, they'll have one supervisor that is in charge of, say, four tables, four or five dice tables. They're having enough trouble just getting all the money counted and getting all the players' cards put in. They're not actually watching the games and watching the payouts. So it's very important that you know what your bets pay. So I hope these, these common mistakes help you guys out. I hope you may have learned something from it. And definitely encourage you guys to learn as much about the game as possible. It's just going to make it easier for you to play, and you're going to win more money. If nothing else, you're going to have a better time. As always, thank you for watching. We appreciate it. Please hit the like and subscribe button, and so we'll catch you next time.